Hello and welcome to this course of Secure Systems Engineering. Uh, this course is a fifth in the series of uh, courses on information security that is offered by NPTEL. So this course is an eight week course and uh, during this course we will actually look at details about uh, aspects about security systems and essentially we will look at aspects about how uh, systems can be built to uh, be more secure. So uh, let us start uh, this particular class with a small introduction about what we mean by secure systems. Uh, if you look at a computer system, what are the threats for that computer system and uh, what are the current practices uh, to mitigate these threats. So let us consider that a computer system is a closed box like this. Now uh, this is a box and uh, there is no connections to the outside world. So as long as nothing enters this box or nothing leaves this box. Uh, the contents of this box is safe. In a very similar way, when we consider computer systems, if the computer is totally disconnected from the external world, uh, no information is going into the computer and no information is going outside the computer, then we can say that computer system is secure. However, this is not what happens in practice. In practice, uh, there are a lot of uh, viruses, worms and sp uh, spyware which are around the computer system. So these spyware may not be present in the system, but it will be outside the system. And in such a case, the uh, system is still secure. The reason is that the information content in the system is enclosed by this box and is not affected by the external malware or viruses or spyware, which is outside this particular box. Therefore, in such a scenario also, we can uh, consider that the computer system is still secure. Now consider that there is a flaw in this box. Okay, so there is a small flaw by which an external malware or a, a virus or a spyware could enter into this particular box and would result in the system being not secure. Therefore, it is only this particular flaw which is shown over here that could lead to a system being not secure. Now uh, let us look at what the different types of flaws are. So uh, uh, we could actually categorize uh, different flaws in a computer system in uh, multiple categories. So one thing is uh, a flaw in the design. For example, we have a processor and the processor as we know is a highly complicated or highly complex design. There are uh, multiple modules, a large number of pipelines. Uh, large memories um, and all of these blocks are actually interacting with each other at a very high frequency and uh, doing a lot, lot of operations per nanosecond. Now even a small flaw in this entire design could uh, result in a vulnerability and it could lead to an exploit that an attacker uh, could use to gain access into that particular system. So one quite famous flaw, the Intel uh, Pentium's floating point uh, bug. I would not go into the details of this particular uh, flaw, but uh, you could actually look it up on Wikipedia and so on to see uh, uh, roughly in the mid 90s uh, how a flaw in the floating point unit of uh, Intel processors had uh, led to a vulnerability where uh, when you do a floating point operation, uh, the result uh, would be incorrect. Now, this particular flaw. Um, much in uh, several years later was then exploited by cryptographers uh, to create attacks on ciphers uh, and therefore predict secret keys uh, of the cipher by exploiting this uh, floating point bug. A next flaw that could occur uh, is hardware flaws. So these flaws could be intentional hardware trojans that are inserted at the time of manufacture uh, by uh, third parties. For example, uh, when a, a company actually uh, designs a circuit or designs a VLSI chip and sends it for fabrication to a third party, a hardware trojan may be inserted. This trojan will be typically dormant and not easily detectable during the testing time of this particular chip. However, when uh, this trojan gets the right trigger, then it wakes up and it could get access to the information that is getting computed. Uh, in the chip. So uh, these are other flaws and these uh, hardware trojans are big threat uh, to computing systems these days 
essentially because it is extremely difficult to detect whether an IC or a processor or a chip is having a hardware trojan present within it. Um, the third aspect uh, is of course uh, what we are all familiar with, uh, it is the human factor. And uh, although we would actually build a computing system, let us say with no design flaws or we somehow guarantee that there are no hardware trojans or no hardware flaws, still there eventually would be a human uh, who actually uses the system at least uh, many of the systems like smart uh, phones or uh, laptops or desktops and so on and this could be a reason for a vulnerability. For example, uh, all of us would have got some form of spamware or uh, spam emails or pop-up windows that actually come up like uh, as shown in this particular uh, uh, slide and uh, it is not surprising that many people actually fall prey to these uh, pop-ups and uh, spam emails and would click on the buttons present here. As a result of this, it could trigger an external malware virus or a, uh, or a worm or anything uh, to enter into your system. The fourth flaw that we will actually be uh, looking at and spending a lot of time uh, during this course are due to bugs in the program. So there could be several uh, bugs in a program which uh, do not get detected by co the compiler or uh, while uh, testing the program. So let us for example say uh, that we have a programmer who is writing a program to say sort 100 uh, numbers present in an array. So he would use uh, one of the standard sorts like selection or bubble or quick sort and compile the program get an executable. Then he would run the program uh, give an input of say 100 numbers and uh, ensure that uh, the output is actually sorted. But this actually shows that the program is working correctly for the given input. However, there may be other bugs which are not detected so easily and these are the bugs which are the flaws and an attacker would actually use to gain access into your system and then control the system. So what we have seen over here are uh, different types of flaws. We have seen design flaws, hardware flaws, uh, bugs in the program and the human factor. Now if an attacker wants to get access to your system, all that is required is just one single flaw. Any one of these is sufficient for the attacker to get access into your system and therefore control your entire system or steal secret data that is present in the system. In this course, we will be looking at uh, this particular aspect. So we will be looking at bugs uh, in the system and how an attacker could utilize these bugs to create malware or create exploits that uh, could be introduced into your system and then could run and steal data in your system. There are quite a few such bugs uh, present in uh, different programming languages. So, uh, but we will be actually focusing on uh, programming bugs present in C and C++ uh, programs. These uh, fall into this category of bugs in the system software. So why we focus on uh, C and C++? is due to the fact that many system software such as st starting from operating systems to uh, virtual machines and uh, a lot of the underlying libraries are written in C and C++. Further, uh, these system software are quite large uh, and they are susceptible to a lot of uh, such programming bugs which could be a way that an attacker could enter and exploit the system. So we will be looking at during the course at uh, buffer overflows and uh, buffer overreads, heaps, double frees and use after free, integer overflows and format strings. So these uh, bugs present in uh, system software have been in the past exploited quite a bit to create malware that could attack your system. In addition to uh, bugs in the system software, you could also have bugs in other applications that are present. One common example is the SQL injection bug uh, present in modern database systems. Uh, but we will not be going into details about such application level uh, uh, vulnerabilities. Another aspect uh, which is gaining quite importance uh, is due to something known as side channel attacks. So these attacks differ quite considerably 
from the bugs like what we have seen over here. While these bugs like the buffer overflow, heaps, integer overflows and format strings are due to vulnerabilities or due to flaws during the programming, side channel attacks on the other hand uh, could be attacks on programs which are actually coded correctly without uh, any presence of any bug. Later on in this uh, course, we will be actually looking at how these attacks are actually developed. So now what we have seen is that a vulnerability in a system can be utilized by an attacker to create malware which would enter into your system or gain access into your system through that particular vulnerability. So we have seen that uh, there are different types of such vulnerabilities or uh, what we call as uh, flaws. And uh, we've seen that the flaws could occur due to design uh, aspects, uh, due to hardware trojans, uh, due to programming bugs, as well as uh, due to the human factor. So there are many ways by which engineers and scientists have developed techniques by which these flaws or these attacks on systems can be actually prevented or if not uh, uh, prevent, completely prevented, at least mitigated. So one of the best ways to prevent such kinds of attacks is the first approach uh, which and it is quite kind of the obvious approach that uh, one would start off with is where we want to design systems without any flaws. In such a case what we would say is that we take our system which is represented here by this cold box and analyze the system mathematically using tools such as static analysis. Uh, a formal proof uh, assistance such as cock or model checkers and therefore certify that the system is completely flawless and as we know if there are no flaws in the system there are no vulnerabilities and if there are no vulnerabilities there can be no attacks on the system. However, the drawback here is that such a system is very difficult to develop. The reason being that this form of uh, analysis that is using static analysis or formal proofs are not very scalable to large uh, codes. Uh, therefore, a lot of these activities are restricted mostly in the academic uh, circles. So one such effort was made by an Australian uh, group ca uh, called NICTA where they actually developed an operating system called SEL4 uh, and they have been able to prove that SEL4 is flawless under certain assumptions. Therefore, under these assumptions, SEL4 does not have any vulnerabilities. These tools which can actually certify that there are no such vulnerabilities in SEL4 and therefore, uh, SEL4 is uh, flawless and cannot be exploited, uh, exploited under these assumptions. However, for all practical systems like uh, standard operating systems like Linux or Windows, such uh, doing such a analysis would be extremely difficult uh, given the current uh, technology of these tools. And therefore, we would require other techniques to ensure that uh, standard operating systems like Linux and Windows are not affected by um, malware or any other kind of external malicious code. Now that we cannot ensure that large systems uh, can be built without flaws, what we will actually come up with is a second approach where we will build system with having flaws but then encapsulate this particular system in something known as a sandbox environment. So you could consider this sandbox environment as a container in which our system is actually present. Even though this system has flaws, malware is actually prevented from entering into the system due to these uh, due to the sandbox container that is present in the system. So this technique also takes care of the human factor as well. Now if a user clicks on a link in a malicious website, uh, the system would still remain secure because of this closed sandbox environment. The third approach is to detect and mitigate attacks. So this is what a typical antivirus uh, software does. So when a program executes, uh, the antivirus software would uh, monitor various characteristics of the program and uh, then identify whether this program is actually trying to do something malicious. Or in other words, uh, the antivirus so software would detect malicious code based on certain characteristics during the execution 
or based on certain characteristics of the binary of that particular executable. In this particular course, we'll be looking at both attacks as well as defenses. So with respect to the attacks, we will be looking at attacks at the software, hardware level as well as side channel attacks. Now the software attacks are mostly focused on the system software and therefore we will be looking at uh, C and C++ programs, we will be under understanding the bugs and the vulnerabilities present in these programs and how an exploit can be written to use these particular vulnerabilities. For hardware and uh, side channel attacks, we will be studying various forms of these attacks uh, such as the cache timing attacks, uh, power analysis attacks and fault injection attacks. Now side by side, we will be also looking at the popular defi defense strategies to prevent such attacks. So these defense strategies could be present either at the compiler or at the hardware or by building special enclaves known as trusted computing environments. So what you can expect by the end of this course is that you will have a good understanding about the internals of malware and other security threats. You would be able to evaluate uh, security measures and apply them, uh, them to various uh, parts or various components from the hardware operating system and the compiler and also you would be able to trade off between the performance and security. Now this third aspect is very critical. So for example, we could have a highly secure system or we could develop a highly secure system. However, to execute or run any application on that system would be a huge overhead. And therefore, it is very important to evaluate the trade-offs obtained between performance of the system and the security achieved. We will not be following any specific textbook in particular, but mostly research papers and uh, appropriate links would be provided at various stages uh, during the videos and these links will be present in the slides and uh, you could actually download these links and uh, read those links to get more details about uh, the concepts. So during the course we will be evaluating and an analyzing a lot of different programs. These programs are very small but uh, we will go quite in depth to actually analyze these programs. So you could actually download these programs from this uh, uh, Bitbucket repository which contains not just the programs but also gives you a lot of, lot of instructions about how to run these particular programs and also this repository would contain slides and other assignments that you could try out. Thank you.